Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. Week in the life of a commercial gas engineer. Here are some gas boosters. Just checking them out during the service to make sure that the belts are good. Also turning down the temperature on the boilers, bringing it back to what I found it on. As you know, turning up the set point on boilers when doing servicing helps keep them on for longer. When you do turn up that set point so that they don't lock out quicker whilst you're doing your servicing. So this is an XO draft TBC20. This is an XO draft connected to the flue dilution system. And this is the flue dilution system outside. Always be careful when you have flue dilution systems to make sure, always always check the full run of flues because sometimes you'll have a flue dilution system and you may not even realise it's there. So try to check the entire run of the flue. Never take it for granted that all is okay. Sometimes flue liners can collapse um, or there can be flue dilution systems or sometimes flues can even be covered or damaged. So try your best always to not be caught out check do endeavor to check the entire run of the flu and always leave your printouts on the boilers some companies won't stipulate that you should leave your printouts on the boilers but it's good practice to leave your printouts on boilers get your high and low readings if that is um, attainable on the boiler you're working on but get your readings and take pictures of your readings and write where they are the, um, what boiler it was and so on and keep a record for yourself it can act as a get out of jail card one day as well and try and also make use of the i noticed that when working and seeing what other engineers do sometimes not all engineers get a connect their manometers on the boilers when they're checking burner pressures or working pressures but why not make use of that feature and get the the pressure of the boiler you can see minus here but it was actually 31 Minibar. but check make use of that feature on the manometer a lot of engineers do not actually know that you can use the manometer and record the pressure of the boiler whether it be the burner pressure or the working pressure make use of that feature do bear in mind that sometimes relays can be bypassed in bms panels but make sure you look at the readings or should i say make sure you look at the drawings that you know what you're bypassing because you could be bypassing safety devices so make sure you know if you are bypassing the fire safety circuit or whatever you are doing put a note on it to make sure that the other person knows what you've bypassed and just trace what you are bypassing okay bypassing should only be a temporary measure and done in order to test to see where the problem is I don't know what the hoo-ha is with HIU units, that's heat interface units. A lot of people get stuck on HIU units. They are not that complicated. There's a lot of videos on YouTube as well that guide you to what the different parts do. There's not much to them. The heat comes from the communal boiler, from the plant room. And then there's just a few things that can stop the heat getting around the system. It's There's, there's localised pumps on here and there's um, actuators. It's just circulation and you have to work out, you can trace the heat and, and then work out why the heat is not getting through the system. And it's I've only seen several things hold off HIU units working, such as plate heat exchangers, actuators, pumps and so on. There's not that much to it. They're very simple. So just get your hand out and start feeling what okay i've got my heat coming into my hi unit what is now stopping it from getting around the system always write down fault codes when you see them before you even hit that reset button on this particular pump you can just hit this button here and it can reset this wheelo pump wheelo wheelo how do you pronounce it it resets the pump pressurization units you have pumps there you can um, bleed them you can check the impeller and so on see if it's seized um, you can vent them, you can open them up and vent them and see if there's water inside of them. And you can also test the pumps on, usually on the display, get past the password, you can often test the pumps, pump one and pump two and see if they are working. Check out this pump here, it's raining, it's pouring. Yeah, this pump was, um, had given up the ghosts and it was working, but it was actually leaking. So it needed to be changed because both pumps were dead. One of the pumps had seized and the fault code was E010, which states that the shaft is mechanically blocked. Some people like to whack these and do things like that, but sometimes that doesn't always fix the problem. Um, sometimes the pump is just gone. Every now and then when I pop into Lidl, I like to share what 
cool tools or gadgets that I saw to see if it can help you out. They'll let you know that there's sometimes a bargain out there to get some moisture meters. These are good. Uh, I don't I don't know how good this particular brand is, but moisture meters are good for finding leaks. Sometimes people have very expensive thermal cameras, which can help in certain situations as well. But moisture meters can help you to detect when it, where a leak is. It can help you. It's a cheap and cheerful way of tracing where a leak can be in brickwork or in um, floorboard and so on. They've helped me in the past. I lost my last one. I didn't buy this particular one here. I don't know why, but I haven't been tracing many leaks lately, so I don't really need this tool. But if you are tracing leaks often in buildings, this is a tool to get. Little have them at the moment, and for a tenner, it's hardly anything. I think the last one I bought was 20 odd pounds, and I left it in a roof space. What else did they have? They had an inspection camera in Little. I don't know if they have it in your nearest branch, but 40 pounds. Um, I don't know if I would actually buy an inspection camera, but maybe for you, it be it may be of some use. They also had an inspection tool, inspection mirror. These can be quite handy as well. They had a 20 pound angle grinder. I don't know how good this is. I haven't tested it, but maybe it's good. It's even cordless, 20 pounds. You can get 20 pound cordless angle grinder. Wow. I don't know if it comes with the blade. Maybe it does, but that seems reasonable. If it, Even if it broke within a year, that's not too bad. They also had ratchet sets for under 10 pounds even a little mini tool bag i don't know if i would get it but if you want a little cheap tool bag they had some tools in there too there's a screwdriver and um, bit set oh the calipers why didn't i buy the calipers i don't know why the moisture meter and the calipers i don't know why i didn't pick them up but calipers for a tenner that's not too bad calipers are good for when you're sizing up pipe work and so on so you can just use a tape measure but the caliper is just very accurate and a nice snazzy way of checking flanges bellows and so on oh here i was just trying to trace the um, t6 to t7 and t6 to t8 for high and low on a burner and then you link t6 to t7 for low fire and t6 to t8 for high fire so remember with these that you have to turn up the temperature on the main boiler that the burner is attached to in order for the unit to go into high and low fire usually Came across a side stream field that had a fault and just had to turn the unit off the PD monitor and then turn it back on and that solved the problem. Came across a system where there was heat but the heat didn't seem to be getting away from the boiler. As you can see here, here's the temperatures but the heat just, it says that the boiler temperatures were not high but when I went to the boiler, this is what the flow temperature was at the boiler found one of these tripped in the control panel one of the mcbs tripped looked to see what it was serving and it was serving the variable temperature pump that's the one that gets the heat around the building so when going over to the pumps i found that one of them one of the pumps was extremely noisy on the variable temperature pump and then one of the other pumps had basically tripped the mcb so it looks like new pumps are required they're not getting the heat away from the plant room to the parts of the building that are required also checked that the pressure was right at the pressurization units. Then had one of these new way burners where you have to input a password to get in. Can be quite finicky. What do you think of them? Let me know. So I managed to get into the unit and then took it from there through the various settings. So here's the various settings. So you, the different stages you can see on the far left, you've got stage one stage two and the different stages so stage one is low fire stage nine is or status nine is high fire and then you've got the different gas settings there in the air setting on the right and you have to adjust those and acknowledge those all right thank you for joining me until next time bye bye bye